Devil species, devil species, unknown misery, unknown misery, cryptic, cryptic. You roll with cheeky rappers now, we rebuke them. You roll with cheeky rappers now, we rebuke them. You roll with cheeky rappers now, we rebuke them. What's up, everyone? Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com, with my man here, David Sandler, the Sandman, from the old school Weeder crew. What's up, brother? What's doing, brother? Sitting in his office, Isotory Technology. I have a flight. It's Isotory now. Yeah. But they're all about technology. And we're going to get all technological on you on meal timing. Because I get asked this a lot. I'm a trainer. I usually recommend between three and six meals a day because the main thing is, and I was actually talking, you know Bruce Neller. And he's, he's an eccentric mofo. I love Bruce because he's crazy. I love everybody, but Bruce is absolutely out of his mind. And, you know, Bruce and I were talking. He sent over a study saying that, you know, basically the study concluded that the optimal meal timing is every three hours. And Bruce said, well, I do believe that's optimal. The main thing is quant it's actually getting it in. It's actually hitting your right. protein is more important. So quantity over timing. But, yes, it does make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I've always been of the thought process, first of all, because my personal metabolism is so high, so I'm jaded, yep. that you want to keep stuff flowing. For me, it's just common sense. Mm -hmm. But then you have these different kinds of sex, S-E-C-T-S, mm -hmm. not S-E-X, that gotcha. say, hey, it's all about that there intermittent fasting. It's all about nutrient timing and this and that. And my thought to you, what I ask you as someone who's respecting the science community, Meal frequency, meal timing, does it matter and what's optimal, not what works, because everything will work if you hit your macros. Yeah. Everything will work, but what is, if you're just anal retentive, you want to get results, what works? Well, you know, one of the flaws with studies are simply that, you know, you have to control so many variables. So, and it's not that I discount studies, I, as a you know, scientist, we do them all the time. Yeah. Uh, but you have to control variables that aren't normal for yeah. a lot of people. So for me, I still am uh, under the same school issue. You gotta keep hitting the, uh, you know, the meals six times a day if you can, five times if not, but, but twice a day is not cutting it. Is that empirical or is that scientific? Uh, well, there's good science to back it, but it's also just, you know, it's it's also trying to mesh with the way people exercise and do stuff and so forth. you got to remember this, that most studies don't work with trained people like yourself often. And so that becomes a limiting factor yeah. because when you're training like you are to support the muscle mass, you got to be eating more frequently. That's you got a high metabolism because you got a lot of muscle. Well, you saw me. I went an hour without food before dinner last night and I almost passed out. Yep. You know, Stephen's wife had to bring over some cucumbers so I wouldn't pass out to hold me over to them delicious bison burgers. Yeah, that's just it. I mean, I think a lot of people really think, you know, I'll just have a little tiny meal and it'll all just go away, you know, it'll stay there. And it, if you've got a fast metabolism, your body's burning that stuff up like instantly. I have a fast metabolism as well. I got food in my drawer, I got food in the fridge, I bring food right? everywhere, I got food under the desk. Yeah. You gotta always be uh, sticking it in. Now what about now what about people <laughs> I'm not gonna go on, <laughs> on that one. Now what about now <laughs> they'll catch it in the comment section. Now what about let's say, you know, our average consumer, we've met them at trade shows and this is not a knock to our average consumer. We love you guys, we're gonna help you reach your goals. But they're not necessarily as trained as us. Right. I've been lifting for damn near 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been lifting for, I think, wasn't, didn't you train with Moses at one point? I did, I did. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, so we're, we're some old school, we've built up some muscle yeah. mass, you know, um, you know, we've, we've done our thing. He was a world-class power lifter. I'm a pro bodybuilder. So what about the average dude who, let's say his, his BMR is 1,500 calories. Yeah. I mean, what about freak, is it, is it more beneficial for them to eat three 500 calorie meals or six 250 calorie meals? I mean, well, to, just to get down to the whole nitty gritty of that. I still believe that it's better to have the, the, the more frequent meals at, at smaller calories. Now, I know for us, it's hard to sit there and imagine what a 250 calorie meal is. I just <laughs> ate a bar that had more calories than that. Oh God, yeah. So I don't know that that's really possible, but the bottom line is maybe if you're really that that low on your uh, you know uh, on your basal metabolic rate, then yeah, you might drop it off a little bit, maybe down to four, you know, up to yeah. four meals with a little smaller. But without a doubt, they still need the multiple meals, and you know more. And that what that does is helps the body learn how to utilize fuels better too, speed up the metabolism, but allows for pro protein synthesis to occur all the time. Yeah. Instead of having these lag periods where there's not enough uh, you know nutrients in the body for the body to utilize, so. 
And this is a segue into a video I'd like to do in a second here. Because we're going to split this up. No more hour and 20 minute videos on this channel for the next couple days. <laughs> Intermittent fasting. Why are people getting results eating in a six hour window after 18 hours of fasting? Well, I think you got to describe what results are. And I'm not convinced that the results are, uh, you know, really good preservation of lean muscle mass and just burning of fat. Meaning, I think there's some other things going on. If you report weight loss overall, that's not a good number. That could be water loss, it could be fat loss, it could be muscle loss, which is often part of the thing as well. I think you have to report with lean muscle mass and how much that retains versus how much you know uh, comes off. And so I'm not, I'm not convinced the data is there that supports uh, that as a really good diet per se. But, you know, again, if you're looking for just rapid weight loss or something, uh, it might work for you. So it could work, and, and it could definitely for some people be beneficial. Again, people are different. Yep. Um, personally, again, I had a training partner, my buddy Van. He has, he has a pro fitness channel. Um, he did intermittent, he tried intermittent fasting for three weeks. And he was, and I know this is something you might link up on your channels, but he was the most ornery bitch I've ever been around in my life. Exactly. And I'd be even worse. Oh, so, yeah. um, you know, it's a matter of what fits in your lifestyle. If that's your thing, great. As a trainer, I do believe that three is the minimum amount of meals I'd recommend. I'm and I, I also, there's another topic that can be brought up. The protein stat theory by Lane Norton, the University of Illinois, showing the protein synthesis of branch chains between meals. Like yeah. even if you took like a scoop of Restorate between meals yeah. or something like that. Um, that's something to look at as well. Or even a scoop of protein between mm -hmm. meals. When you keep, and it actually had been, he showed that it elevates protein synthesis more than the whole meal itself. And he was mm -hmm. having a five feedings a day. So, I mean, there's so many things involved, but the bottom line is, yes, it is quantity over timing. Right. But if you're looking to maximize your gains, I am going to go out on a limb and say that meal frequency, you want to, I'm not a big fan of long portions of time without eating. I, I, I agree with you 100%. And you got to remember this, I mean, protein synthesis, we know what happens when you're, when you're breaking down muscle tissue you know, immediately following workouts, during the workout or whatever. So that makes sense to have protein there and so forth. But for the rest of the time, we're not, we don't fully know when the body's actually doing its, its major protein synthesis. So, and that's what you guys are training for. At least that's what I'm training for. And that's what everybody should be training for, whether you're training for size or strength or speed or power or endurance. Yeah. It all undergoes muscle protein synthesis. So the rest of the timing that your body needs uh, to be pulling in proteins, you can't time that. You know, you can time the workout. Short of that, that's it, because you know when you're working out. Other than that, you need to have the, the fuels in the body. The only way you can do that consistently is to make sure you constantly keep feeding it. Yeah. Well, that's that's that. And, you know, protein synthesis, you know, it's, 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 look, I'm just, I'm old school. And I can't go, I just to train my body to go a certain amount of time with food. And frankly, I'd get hungry. And again, that's a trained athlete, but even for the average person, I've put people on more frequent feedings with the same calories and had them lose weight. It also yeah. has a satiation effect. And I, see, I think also people think protein synthesis, they just think of a bodybuilder. Yeah. They think the only person who goes undergoes protein synthesis is a bodybuilder because they need all that muscle mass. Well, everything you do is about rebuilding the structures within the body. The structures within the body are built on protein. Mm -hmm. So whether you're an endurance athlete or, or a big, huge bodybuilder, Either way, you still undergo muscle protein synthesis. It's the training that forces the body to adapt a certain yeah. way. You gotta fuel that. You gotta fuel that adaptation process. You gotta have it in there. And so I'm, I'm with you. I think anybody shortchanging themselves, uh, you know, it's just not a really good method if you wanna preserve lean muscle mass. Now, if you don't care about your lean muscle mass and you're just trying to drop a whole ton of weight, hey, have at it. You want that lean muscle mass to stay there? I think you gotta be fueling more frequently. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tend to agree. So that's that, and uh, you know, I really have nothing witty to say except that uh, protein synthesis, it, it's not a game. Yeah, we recruit them, we ain't no blind sheep, so we teach for the movement. Look out, look out for one another, look in.